So let's switch quickly and play a clip of Ariel responding to this because I feel like his response was really measured and really reasonable considering how hard in the paint he went at Brendan. I feel like because he respects Paddy and likes Paddy as a guy, he kind of went a bit soft on him and just kind of was a bit more clinical and you know and black and white in terms of how he addressed him and i feel like he gave some good points in what he said regarding everything concerning dana white and ariel and he kind of laid it on really really well and kind of laid it out so really well in terms of what their issue could be but let's play the video with ariel speaking about it here i'm um, curtis every show mma whatever hour of whatever it's called let's play it friend pt carroll sends me a text and he says, hey, man, I'm really sorry about, you know, all the Patty stuff. And I was like, what are you talking about? Didn't see it. No idea what you're talking about. And he goes, never, oh, Great man. guy, never well, met him. Here it is. And so I see this clip that is now making the rounds. Uh, at first was confused as to what it was, what platform, all that stuff. But I understand this is from uh, Patty's podcast. And he has uh, Dana White on as, as a guest, his boss. And they're talking about me. And I listened to the clip. I watched the clip. And I will tell you, truth be told, you know, been doing this now for a minute, as the kids like to say, 2006 to be exact, getting a little older, now in my 40s. There was a time when I knew if someone was talking about me, if I knew it was coming or if I knew that there was something out there or if I was watching something or listening to something, I would feel something in my chest. Like I would feel almost like my heart go into my gut. Like I would I would feel like shit. I would feel sad. I would feel depressed. No one wants to have people talk about them negatively, right? No one wants to have people shitting on them. No one wants someone in the public eye to be insulting them. It doesn't feel good. That's not why you get into this. And in my younger days, I used to have pretty thin skin. And, and luckily, over time, you develop thicker skin and, you know, you uh, you develop a knack for letting things roll off your back. And so that's kind of, you know, something that you have to kind of go through a bunch of stuff to to get to that point. And so I watch this clip and I see, you know, like the text and then I see, uh, all right, now people are starting to tag me in, in, uh, in the, the video clip on Twitter and all that stuff, Instagram. And I asked myself, sort of like a fighter before a big fight we had someone recently tell us this like wow I was shocked I wasn't nervous I'm shocked I wasn't nervous I was asking myself why aren't you feeling anything here and this is not I'm not I'm not I'm not doing a gimmick here I'm not you know I, I actually legitimately asked myself I checked in on myself why aren't you feeling anything here why aren't you fired up why aren't you feeling sick why aren't you feeling sad why aren't you feeling down why aren't you feeling depressed and I came to this conclusion number one as you all probably know by now as a human being as as a, as, a, as a person forget promoter forget businessman forget any of that as a human Human being, man to man, the respect that I have for Dana White or perhaps lack thereof, non-existent. And I've said this before. I, I, I don't. I don't view him as a human. I just view him as an entity. I view him as the face of the organization that we talk about ad nauseum on this show and other shows. So hearing him say the same old things about me, the same old insults with no substance, with uh, nothing really backing in, no factual backup, it, it, it is so tired. I'm so immune to it that I don't feel anything anymore. It's, you know, this is grade five stuff. This is, you know, oh, wow, he called me a name. Great. Um, don't feel anything. Don't feel fired up. Don't even get upset about it because I've heard it before and it's just the same old same old and, and for someone his age to be talking about anyone like that is you know you can you can you come up with your own um conclusions there but i honestly didn't feel anything from it however i then listened to patty who as you all know have had a long-standing relationship with and have never heard him you know speak of me publicly like this before in the past when i you know when i heard him say that i was thinking all right well, why don't I feel a certain way about it? I said publicly in the past. Well, first of all, he has said some of these things to a degree um, in private to me, but never in public on a show. And I was wondering, all right, well, like, why, why is he doing it now? Now of all times, why is he doing it right now? Well, you know, you can probably come to the conclusion that he saved this, this material, this ammunition, if you will, because he's sitting in front of his boss and he's trying to curry favor with his boss. He's trying to, um, dare I say, you know, get in his good graces, right? So I was like, all right, you know, fair play as I said, and as I've said in the past, um, or as they say, as I've said in the past, and as I said last year on this show, when talking about the Brendan Schaub stuff, Ooh. I honestly don't mind and I don't get upset and I don't get down when people call me a shit journalist, a bad host, a crappy, you know, podcast guy, whatever, reporter, journalist. I, I don't mind that. I actually don't. What bothers me though, is when people lie. That's what bothers me. Funny thing about what you said there is that that's the opposite of Brendan. Anyone that criticizes or critiques anything to do with Brendan is immediately categorized as a troll. 
right? He kind of immediately puts him as a troll, as a hater, as a homeless, right? The irrelevant. No, there's nothing, there's no validity to what they're saying. When everybody on there is criticizing his personality, the way he goes about things, the things that he said publicly, maybe his legitimacy of his career, whether or not he's funny or not, they're immediately classified as haters. So say we want about Errol, he may be a little bit of an antagonizer on his own way. He may have his own errors and his own faults. There may be a bit of ego narcissism associated with him also to a varying degree but at least he's very self-aware he does strike me as somebody that is incredibly self-aware to the point where i feel like that's probably part of his kind of secret source that's part of his secret ingredient that's got him very to got, got him to the point where they're successful i look at him similar to like a pat mcafee he kind of exactly he understands who he is he understands what he means to you know sports and broadcasting and media and whatever else content generation overall and he really kind of leans into it so i love all that kind of vibe around it but regardless anyway i'm not gonna watch the entire thing i think most of you have seen it it's like in 12 parts here courtesy of this account um called jeddy goodman so you can check it out here if you want to that's his at there on the screen it's a whole thread there's many many videos in it but i'm not gonna watch the entire thing i'm just gonna kind of give you a bit of my impression because i'm sure most of you have basically seen all of that before right um so let's just quickly go through what i kind of think regarding everything concerning ariel hawani said watching it obviously the whole exchange between them and definitely Arrow's response or maybe more so paddy what he said you know for sure wherever brendan shub is right now he's got a rock hard chub on he's got the hardest rockest hardest of the chub that he's ever had ever right he's completely happy but he must be conflicted because the paddy guy i get the impression this is just me talking out my ass here i get the impression that he's not necessarily the biggest fan of brendan shub he might have gone on his show they might have had some bad in there but i don't necessarily feel like he would like brendan knowing him from afar and how i know people from up north and how they can sniff out grifters because people up north are probably the most adept and the most attuned to sniffing out bullshit artists sniffing sniffing out basically grifters so i don't necessarily think he would be the biggest fan of brendan as a person maybe he was a fan of him to go on his show and promote himself but i don't necessarily think paddy really likes brendan so it's a weird place to be because if you're brendan should be got a boner because ariel's getting attacked but he's getting attacked and getting ridiculed and being you know insulted online by someone like a paddy who maybe just used you for your platform doesn't necessarily like like you and someone like a dana who categorically doesn't like you right dana white legitimately i feel like is the kind of person even to this day the same way he did with ariel i feel like if brendan ever had the guts and the nerve to go to a ufc event i had the feeling dana white would go to the extent especially now after they had their recent beef he would legitimately get security to escort him out of that building or out of that arena he would make a public showcase of doing it too during the main card when the cameras were on German, he would legitimately get security to escort him out of that building so clearly he's got no friends in i don't feel like dana or paddy so it's a bit of a weird place to be in in that regard then then i would say if you're ariel i wonder because as much as i like the dude and i really do enjoy his um coverage of ufc i do enjoy his interviews and i feel like he's probably the best journalist out there because personally i'm not necessarily the biggest fan of luke thomas in my opinion that's not just not you know it's just not for me but i do like his show with bc but as a personality and as a sort of analyst of the sport i kind of get insufferable vibes from flipping um luke thomas personally for me but again it's just a personal thing but I wonder if Ariel ever looks in the mirror and kind of or maybe just meditates and sits down with his thoughts and thinks to himself why do you get such a negative reaction so or not why do you get such a visceral reaction from people it feels like if people are either super hardcore team Ariel especially fighters or managers whatever they may be or they're really really against it there's no middle ground there's no like oh yeah he's just a guy he feels like he kind of really conjures up feelings on either end of the spectrum maybe that's the special ingredient for somebody that's going to be an amazing content creator or it's going to be an amazing you know public figure or an amazing anchor or media figure whatever in the sport maybe that's what you need you need to be a bit more mighty in the same way that skip and shannon are right i'm sure there are people who hate and love them but i wonder if Ariel ever sits down because you know when you look at it and ship it away some of the time whenever he's kind of firing back at people it does feel like it's always like oh it's not my fault there's an element of like i did everything right i did nothing i did nothing wrong you're just seeing it wrong here's me laying it out why you're wrong and what you're saying well even though I'm, I'm sure he i do remember there's bits in there where he did really reflect and was quite honest about his shortcomings and what he might have done wrong but i wonder if he ever sits down and thinks to himself why am i always getting such a reaction for people like this to this extent like why does dana hate me so much till now i wonder why 
because I don't think the Dana hate personally for me has to stem from that UFC what was it 200 card when he allegedly leaked the news of flipping um, what's his face the wrestler coming back it can't be from that that can't be the sole reason why Dana hates this guy so many years on to the point where he's calling up because I think Ariel said it in flipping some of the parts of the video where he said Dana White was actively trying to get him fired from Showtime get him fired from ESPN basically every job that he got Dana White if ever his name Ariel popped up he'd go out of his way to say how much of a C-U-N-T he was how much he hated him and how much that job should be given to somebody else like legitimately trying to ruin his career to the point where like he said he couldn't feed his family and stuff right like potentially that's what he's trying to do and you would imagine sometimes if you don't like somebody you could just coexist especially if you're in media coexist you can live you know in the same industry you don't have to be friends but to go out of your way to try to destroy somebody it feels like this it has to be it has to warrant much more than what ariel did I don't feel like what Ariel did warrants this level of vitriol and venom and bite from Dana. But I don't know what else has happened. That's why I'm really curious to find out if there's more to this story because it can't be just that flipping UFC 200 card. There has to be more to it. But overall, I wonder if he did actually speak about it. Um, I also wonder if that whole thing about clapback that Ariel did, he mentions how, what's his name? he mentions how um he mentions how paddy's manager was basically putting out posts on instagram essentially telling fighters to hey in this digital age you have to regain control of the narrative and all these media opportunities are opportunities to get paid and all this sort of kind of like yeah like a kind of open letter he did to ufc fighters so like hey don't just do interviews for quote unquote free try and get them paid which is absolutely insane to think so because like i said before these fighters men or women should be focusing on destroying whoever walks into the octagon with them and not really be thinking about trying to create a media platform for themselves or anything along that kind of line maybe you can start a youtube channel on the side but you shouldn't be thinking about trying to negotiate deals with youtubers to be paid for interviews or whatnot it just seems like a complete waste of resources and time firstly for me maybe you should just be jumping on people's already pre-made um, ready-made audiences with already you know a certain amount of followings and engagement and just trying to engage those people to kind of watch your cards and buy your pay-per-views and anything else out of that is really gross and in general if you're a journalist also i'd imagine Imagine that would go against any kind of journalistic integrity or whatever else rules that go against it to go and accept payment for interviews because essentially you couldn't be you couldn't go into an interview or into any kind of coverage of the sport without having a bias if you're being paid you're automatically going to have some level of bias if somebody's lining your pockets you already see how some journalists especially in the mainstream media are already compromised when they align themselves to certain political parties or certain networks that are in bed with certain individuals how much more if you're accepting direct contribution to people direct direct bits of money it's impossible it's impossible it's impossible it's impossible to get that right so i'm not really a big fan of that whole idea and i feel like if anything the flipping paddy manager has definitely sowed seeds of discontent to the point where he's muddied it and made it where people are legitimately expecting to get paid off interviews because i've never understand this concept i feel like this is something i've only heard recently when ariel was actually destroying brendan and talking about how he legitimately offers people money for interviews and basically says if you do an interview with me you might get on rogan but it's should never be that sort of vibe in the slightest and like i said prior i definitely do think this is a consequence of the ufc just not paying fires properly if you're not going to pay fires properly like i said previously in another stream regarding the no jumper in, you know drama and kiki taking money under the table if people aren't getting paid properly they're going to start taking money under the table i know that's happening you know i've worked in flipping retail jobs where people weren't getting paid on time and sometimes they take money out of the till when people get hungry they start doing things that they would never ever do prior just because they want to eat and they want to make sure they support themselves so if you put fighters in a corner to the point where they have to kind of you know turn themselves into wwe characters to drive up flipping engagement online and become social media stars ask money for flipping you know interviews and stuff it just gets really 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 gross and i feel like if anything that whole exchange just that the ufc needs to get to a point where they're just paying people more man and just to end this whole coverage of ariel he decided to mention papa's name and kind of go and really stick the boot in and make people make sure people are aware of stuff so here's the final comment from ariel regarding brendan show which i thought was a little bit hilarious taken from the front of kids over it because i will freely admit look, sure. look i'm open book man i'm the guy who cried i'm all that i will tell you when things bother me brendan bothered me brent like i was uh, yeah. like a year ago i was i was in quarantine we were in canada and i saw the clip of him saying you know a million people say this and that and i was like man fuck this guy and i wanted to say something this time ask pt i was like well i'm glad it's wednesday at least i can respond <laughs> to it and move on and then uh that's it so <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, I love it, man. I love how much he hates Brenda, but Brenda's definitely going to have a boner. When he wakes up and finds all this stuff, or he's probably checked it out already, he's going to have such a rock hard boner. The guy who he was dissing, the guy who he was saying was a bad employee and horrible person to work with, is being ripped to pieces by Paddy, one of the biggest stars in the UFC, and obviously by Dana, the head honcho over there at the UFC. So definitely he's got a freaking rock hard boner right now, Brenda, wherever he is. So I can't wait to hear his absolutely redacted take as to what he views and all that sort of stuff.